So today we're going to have a look at how to install snap packs on Arch and the various flavors of Arch. So let's have a look. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So if you don't know what a snap pack is, I'm not sure why you're watching this, but hey, I guess I'll accept the view. So a snap pack is basically a sandboxed application that comes with all of the dependencies or the libraries that it needs so that you don't run into a situation where say you have one library installed on your computer but the program needs a different version of that library. Basically what a snap pack aims to rectify is instead of using what's on your system it'll bring all the dependencies that it needs for itself. This does end up running into a few issues though. It comes with larger applications generally slower applications as well, but it also makes them far more portable. And that's one of the benefits of using a snap pack. You don't really run into the issue of, oh, this Linux distribution uses this type of file and this other one uses this type of file. You can convert between them, but it's still a bit of a hassle. A snap pack is designed to work universally across pretty much all Linux distributions. So now that that definition is out of the way, let's look at how we actually install it. So it's quite simple actually. So this is the Arch Linux wiki. So what we're going to do is we're going to install a program, it's a fairly small program called Snapped, and it's available in the AUR, or you can use the, the Git version of it. I'm just gonna uh, grab the regular version, which I already have installed, so I'll show you guys how to install it, just in case you're not 100% sure. So basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna clone that URL, and when that's done, you're gonna CD into that directory, and then you're going to go make package dash si and I already have it installed so this is going to just go through all of that and then when it gets to the pacman interface it's going to say you already have this application installed so when it gets to there in a couple of seconds I'm trying to delay for time so I don't have to cut it but it doesn't seem like that's going to work so I'll cut till it's actually ready okay so I might have lied about it being a small package it's 67 meg that's still relatively small and I guess there was an update for it so I guess I'll just apply that update before we continue with the video so the first thing we're going to want to do when we've installed this is we're going to want to enable the snapped daemon so to do this we use systemd so we go sys uh, sudo systemctl and it should be called snapped dot socket is it socket or daemon give me one sec I'll check the wiki if you're ever unsure about something, generally coming to the Arch Linux wiki is a fairly good idea. So yeah, it's socket. So we go snap.socket, uh, systemctl, enable, snap.socket. And so if you enable something, you can also give it the dash dash now option, which will also start the service. So if we run that, now we should have the service actually running. From here, we can actually start installing snap packs. So if we go snap, I think help or something like that. So running snap help will bring up the help menu. And basically you can run this with any of the commands. So if you want snap help list, for example, that'll give you the things you can do with list and you can do that for any of the commands. So if we look at the Arch Linux wiki again, we can actually see how to use this. So if we want to find a snap pack, then we can go snap find and say we want to install, I don't know, PyCharm. So if we run that, then it will give us the list of applications that are named PyCharm. So if we want to say install the community version of PyCharm, so we can go snap install PyCharm dash community. And you can't actually install snap packs on a user level at this point. You have to install them as the root user. So if we rerun that with sudo, then we'll be able to install that. And oh, okay, so this actually was a classically confined app. So th there's actually another thing that we're gonna have to do. I was gonna show you this later, but I guess it works if we show you it now. So to deal with classically confined apps. So basically at some point, they decided to change the way that snap packs are actually being confined. So you have apps that are classically confined and apps that are def uh, confined in the new way. So to deal with apps that are classically confined, then basically you just have to create this fairly simple symlink. So you don't really have to think about it, just copy the command. Uh, I think you might have to run it with sudo. Yeah, it's in, maybe, I don't know, just run it with sudo anyway probably safer. So we run that and now we should be able to rerun sudo snap install PyCharm community and it should work this time. So I didn't actually read the, so I didn't read the problem that was actually there. I did have the problem of the missing classic confinement symlink 
or at least I would have if I hadn't done it earlier. But the other option you need to do is you need to provide the dash dash classic option when you want to install a classic snap pack. So if we run that now, now we should be able to just install this. So I'm not sure how big of a file this is, so I don't know how long it's going to take, but let's see, it says it's going to take a minute and a half. So I'm going to cut back to when this is done. But basically, as I was saying before, if there's ever anything you're unsure about on Linux or specifically Arch, but there's a lot of stuff for just general Linux as well. A lot of the time it will help to just come to the Arch Linux wiki and there might be something on here that actually answers your question. So for the, say, the suckless programs, it's not the case, but for, say, this program here, Snapped, there's a lot of, of the basic stuff that you're going to want to use, like how to install stuff, how to show your list, how to do various other things that you're probably going to want to do. Okay, so now we should have um, this snap pack installed. So to run it, we can't just run it like a classic application. So actually, I'll show you, just before we do that, I'll show you that it's actually installed. So if we run snap list, this will uh, show us all of these snap packs that we have installed. So I already had a few installed, like Slack and Spotify, but now we can see that PyCharm community is in here. So to actually run this, it's not as simple as just opening up D menu and running it like that because it's not going to let you run it in the same way. So to actually run it, it's not too difficult, but it just requires a bit of extra work. Okay, so to run a snap pack, basically we need to know the name of it. So let's say we want to run the snap pack we just installed, so PyCharm community. So we're going to run snap run PyCharm dash community. And you're going to want to make sure that you have the snap socket uh, enabled or started because if you don't have that service running then you're not going to be able to start the snap pack so if you just enable it and have it running all the time that your system is running you're not going to run into any difficulties unless for some reason it crashes so if we run that it's going to take a couple of seconds to run because it's a fairly slow uh, program and snap packs are generally just a bit slower to load than other things so now we can see that uh, PyCharm has now loaded it has been a very long time since I've used PyCharm and I don't really feel like going back to it for now. So we'll just close that off. There's a couple other things that we can do. So if we want to update the packages, uh, they actually do get updated automatically, but you can update them manually. So if we run snap refresh, and we have to also run that with sudo, I keep forgetting to do that. So that will cause a manual update to occur. So you don't actually have to ever do this. The update should be on a timer. So it should be just updating at whatever interval it's got itself set to by default. But you don't actually have to leave it at that default interval. You can change that. And that's what we're going to look at how to do next. So if we look at the Arch Linux wiki again, you can actually run snap refresh dash dash time and that'll tell you the next or the last time that it uh, will, has refreshed, I guess. So this is just going to take a couple of seconds to uh, actually update these packages. So I'll get back to you in a sec. Okay, so if we run snap refresh dash dash time, so same command, but just chuck dash dash time on the end. And that'll tell you the last time that it was updated. I guess I didn't actually have a default timer set for it. So it actually didn't automatically update. So if we uh, want to set the time, then we can just copy this command in here. So basically this command will say to update twice a day. So basically it will update at midday and it will update at midnight. So if we just run that and make sure I have it set with sudo because I always forget to do that. Now we should have a um, timer set so it actually will automatically update. I didn't realize it hadn't set that. That was actually kind of weird. It should have probably done that. Oh no, it actually was. It just for some reason hadn't updated in 24 days. Odd. Okay, whatever. So the last thing that we're going to go over is how to remove a snap pack. So this is also fairly simple. So we need to run sudo snap and then remove and whatever the name of the snap pack that you want to remove is. So let's say we're going to remove PyCharm community because I'm never actually going to use it. That actually took only a couple of seconds. And now if we run snap list, I don't think you need to run sudo with snap list, but that'll now show us that we don't have that application is stored anymore. Okay, so I lied. It's not the last thing that we're going to go over, but I didn't feel like actually including a show off of this application because I don't really feel like using it. If you really can't live without a graphical management interface, you can actually use the GNOME Software Center and KDE Discover, 
but you have to install them from the AUR. I don't really feel any need to have a graphical manager for a package manager, but if you really want it, then it's available for you to actually use. So I don't tend to use many snap packs. As you saw, I only have what? I have two installed and then the rest of them, the core stuff are the just core stuff that it needs by default and GNOME, whatever those numbers are, is required for something. Slack probably. I think I might've had Discord at some point. I just forgot to uninstall it. So I don't tend to use snap packs often. I will use them in times when the application is kind of a pain to get working. Like I can't actually get Spotify working on my system from the AUR for some reason. And Slack was another problem and I just didn't want to deal with them. So I was like, okay, I'll just install the snap packs to get them working. But I only use snap packs when I pretty much really can't get around them or I don't feel like putting in the effort to getting the application working without them. So if you want to use them for everything, go right ahead. It's just not my thing. I'd rather the much smaller um, installs and then just managing the libraries myself or with my package manager. So if you like this video, I'm gonna smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you like the lighting, I've got a extra light off to my right. It'd be the left for you guys. So let me know if my face is just way too bright and I'll do something about it. I'm thinking of making some like cheapo soft boxes just to uh, diffuse the light a bit because it is a bit of a harsh light. But I'm also thinking of doing something else because it's, I feel like it's, I'm a bit too white right now. I feel like it's just taking any color out of me that possibly exists and it's just not looking that great. So if you want to let me know what you think about this video, besides that though, uh, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. Maybe you've got some ideas for tutorials you want to see me do. So if you want to be notified when those videos come out, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below and you'll probably get notified when those videos come out. But as always, we can never actually trust YouTube to actually tell anyone that videos are released because that's too difficult, I guess. So if that's the case, go follow my Twitter and my Mastodon and I post video updates there daily. So you should see those unless they decide they feel like stopping updates as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.